Hello folks, this is Express Man, and it's time for something completely different. And now for something completely different. So a couple years ago, I was watching the TV show The Expanse, and in one of the episodes, wouldn't you know it, they grabbed this device for steering the Rosinante that captured my imagination. It was kind of a knob that they would manipulate and twist into kind of how they wanted to control the ship. And I was like, that makes perfect sense. That makes a ton of sense. Well. I since found out that that is a commercially available product. In this case, um, that was actually the 3D Connection Space Mouse. And I was like, I wonder if this would work for Star Citizen. So I did a little bit of research and turns out that yes, in fact, it can work for Star Citizen. So I took a bit of a chance and I ordered one and it came in by Amazon. I hooked it up and yeah, it was a so-so experience. But with some persistence and some tweaking, I have gotten the 3D mouse to the point where it is my favorite way to fly. Now I need to give the disclaimer that I am not yet in the cult of Hotas or Hosas, and I would recommend those if you are a fighter pilot or have any sort of PvP combat aspirations. However, most of the time I am flying medium or large size ships and in those situations I don't believe, it, for sure not for me, that there is any better way to control a ship than a 3D mouse. The reason is, well, your ship basically has six degrees of movement and wouldn't you know it, the 3D mouse has six degrees of movement. So I'm going to just demonstrate um, both sort of the the, the aspect of control, like how I, I activate those movements, and then we're going to go on to some actual examples in the ships to show you sort of how it works. So let's get going. So let me show you how this actually works. Uh, I have a utility here called a joystick gremlin, and uh, that is allowing the display that you're seeing on the screen. Um, what I had to do was that is actually th three programs involved here, unfortunately, and I this this is why it it's a little fiddly to set up. But I had to use a utility called Hid Hide to select what programs on my computer can see what real or virtual input devices, uh, and then I used VJoy to emulate a a joystick, and then this joystick gremlin, and I'll. This allows me to map from any device to VJoy how I want to, uh, and it's actually pretty pretty great for that. So I've got the Space Mouse wireless tab here, and um, I've mapped things to uh, VJoy device one. So I, I have, I'll do a different video if you guys want me to on the whole like technical setup of tweaking this thing, but. Um, I mostly want to show you now like how these inputs work. So here it is. I, I got the small one and I'm glad I did uh, because the other one, I like that you can you like anchor it with your wrist. However, like if you're actively piloting, you can't be running buttons with this hand. You just can't. So I, I first I wondered if I was making a mistake by not getting those buttons, but now I'm glad I didn't. Um, although I do miss that idea of anchoring it down because if I push on it really hard, uh, this will slide. Now that said, this thing is insanely heavy. This is like steel. It is really heavy actually, which is great. And then it's got kind of a nonstick surface on the bottom. And of course I've got one of these big like desk sized mouse, pad, mouse pads. So it is fairly nicely anchored to where it is. That being said, if I really push it enough, it will slide a little bit. So if you look at the uh, the illustration I got at the top left hand corner there, if I start to manipulate this, um, this is me rocking the hat and you can see shouldn't be doing anything on the big screen, but that's because Windows is also trying to recognize it, which is a little annoying. Um, but you can see my, um, okay, so you can see uh, axis four, which is uh, Y axis, I believe, uh, going up and down. Um, now it's fairly sensitive. I mean, you can see, like I'm barely manipulating this thing like a millimeter or two 
and you can see the response but it's six axes so i've got the the hat rocking front backwards left right and of course every degree of angle um but then i also have every degree of strafe so i could push straight forward on it and you see the second one there i can pull straight backward on it i could bump it straight side to side that's different than rocking the hat it's bumping it straight side to side for strafing action but i can also push down pull up for vertical strafing strafing action and as that all wasn't great enough i can twist for twisting action so when you start to think you know roll yaw strafing in every single direction you can start to put this picture in together in your mind of how this works and it's basically you can manipulate this knob any way you want and the ship that you're flying will reflect that manipulation it's actually an incredibly simple concept uh, i found it easier to explain to people that know very little about gaming than to people who know a lot because it's as simple as if I want my ship to point up, but also kind of crab to the right and vertically, I literally just make the knob do that thing. Just point up, crab to the right and vertically, and all my inputs are doing exactly what they need to be doing. Uh, if I want to yaw, but also twist, I can lean and twist, and I get both of those things happening. So it's, it's fantastic. I have... I, I was hoping I would like it, um, and initially I wasn't sure. When I first plugged in and got going, it was fiddly. I had to fight uh, the settings in Star Citizen a bit, and then I eventually added this extra software later. But now that I've tweaked it to my liking, I'm super happy with it. It's important to remember that, you know, it's because I, I'm not like a fighter pilot. You know, I fly mid-sized ships and large-sized ships, and this works really great. One more fancy thing I'm going to show you before we actually get into it in the game here is that you see that I have two sets of those green uh, input sliders up above. That's because I went ahead and created three different attack profiles for this. I noticed that the default was sometimes more responsive than I wanted it to be, and other times less responsive than I wanted it to be. So uh, using Joystick Revlin, I actually created three different modes and mapped those modes to the two buttons, one on either side of this of the space mouse so if i pop this it goes into performance mode let me see if i'm reading that right yep and that allows a uh, very small inputs to have a very dramatic effect so if you see the row on the top that's the default reading and if you see the row on the bottom that's the output after the curves that i created that you see on the right so i'll just i'll just gently crab to the side here and see what percentage up top I apply before it hits 100% on the bottom. You know, it's like about 30% on the bottom and it's achieving 100% at the top. So I want that strong, I want it behaving almost like a button um, to, to be pouring on full thrust. So uh, all of those first three, uh, the X, Y, and Z, are hyper responsive in this precision mode. Uh, the other ones are, uh, the, the rotations are pretty much standard. Now I can go out of standard mode and go into precision mode. This is just a mode that I created. And of course this does the, it should do the opposite. Well, I, I, yeah, so notice in the top row, like let me crab sideways. The, when I'm showing all the way, uh, although it's not really designed that, it's designed for midway range, right? So I just put a little pressure on it and you can see it's doing less in the bottom row. But this allows me to, if I'm working like close to scrap or if I'm going in and out of the hangar and I want, you know, high precision, I don't want it to overreact, uh, or I'm just flying a really little ship that's super twitchy, I might go into this high precision mode and I can just toggle back to standard. Uh, and standard should reflect fairly closely the defaults, but I do tweak it a little bit because I find the defaults to be just slightly under responsive in the sense that you know, I have to push pretty hard to get it to 100% if you look at the top row. And I get really close to that point where this thing wants to slide a little bit. So I, I increase the overall sensitivity slightly for what I call standard mode, but increase it quite a bit for performance mode and, and decrease it somewhat for precision mode. 
So that's pretty cool because I can just change those on the fly in a given situation. But I hope now you understand like basically what this knob does and why to my thinking, it's a very ideal control system, at least for the kind of flying that I do. So let's take it in the game and see what it's like in practice. All right, so here we are in the Manic Dream at Port Olasar. And we're gonna just go on a little pleasure cruise in the Carrick here and just kind of show you how it goes. Uh, notice I've added the overlay uh, so that you can see what my inputs are. Uh, you should note though that this are, these are the, just because the way it's being tracked, these are the, the default inputs. It won't reflect whether I'm in say performance mode or precision mode. It won't reflect the modes that I made earlier. It's just goes back to technical fiddliness that's pretty annoying, but that's just the way it is. Uh, right now we are in standard, and so I am going to just uh, lift off here. Positive ray gear up. And let's see if we can fly out here without hitting anything or anyone. It's actually pretty empty out here for being Port Olisar. But I want to give you guys a point of reference with the station. The biggest thing I haven't solved yet is the speed limiter. I think I might get a thrust lever just to control the speed limiter or some sort of knob. So right now I'm still doing that on my mouse, which is not great. But yeah, um, let's bring the camera over here and do some stuff. So it's just crabbing. Oh, I think the uh, camera is trying to take controls from the. Uh, yeah, it's kind of annoying. No crashy. There we go. So that could be one of those dancing ships that would confuse people if there was a character doing that. A lot of the times when I'm, when I'm flying, I will, um, you know, pop my C key with my free hand and just let uh, let cruise control or uh, throttle control do its thing. Wow, it's being janky so I'll give it a twist also lean and pull up see all the inputs I'm giving it right now yeah there she is But yeah, I like flying it this way. I find it intuitive, I find it responsive, and it makes me very happy. Will 
Oh. Goodbye, spirit. I hope I can fill the gap you leave. All right, now let's take out something a little smaller than a Carrick. Uh, I am in my Pisces. It's a regular little C8X. I am in standard mode, so here we go. Let's do this from the outside. See, it's like, it's a little herky-jerky, just pushing forward on the knob, so, you know, I'll hit C for my cruise control, and... Off we go. How about that? <laughs> I don't know how I did that and lived, but that was actually pretty awesome. So in conclusion, if you really uh, like the idea of simplicity and an extra degree of control than you would get with the mouse and keyboard, and don't necessarily have aspirations for high ball fighter pilot type combat, and you're willing to put up with a little bit of the fiddliness on the configuration side in Windows and the game, if those things all, if you check all those boxes, then I absolutely recommend a 3D mouse as a control system in Star Citizen. Again, I love it. I will continue using it. And it's just made the game better for me. So that's where, I, that that's me. Hope you found this video helpful and have a fantastic day.